One of my favorite books of all time is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It essentially talks about seven habits that you can implement into your life to make you more money, to make you a better person, and live a good life. And because it's helped me a lot throughout my life, I thought to myself, why not make a video on seven habits for highly effective developers? And so what we'll do in this video is just go over seven habits of highly effective devs. Now these habits both come from online research from just people I've found online and videos I've watched, and also senior developers that I am friends with and have talked to. So that being said, let's get into the seven habits of highly effective developers. Now the first big habit that goes into a highly effective developer is that they are problem solvers and they focus on learning the skill of problem solving even ahead of programming. When you look at top developers, sure for the most part, they know how to code better than newer programmers. But what really stands out is their ability to solve problems in an efficient way. One of the most famous quotes of all time by Albert Einstein was his take on solving problems. And the basis of this quote is just to think about the problem and find ways to solve it in a better way rather than just jumping in right away and not really know what's going on. And just looking at high-end developers, they know how to take a piece of software or a problem a client is having and destructure it and look at different angles on how to solve that through the code. And you can easily just get better at problem solving by just thinking more on your own and solving more problems. This could mean something like coding more and just facing more problems, doing more projects, leak code, whatever it may be. But just if you want to be a better problem solver, at least I have found just doing more stuff in that field will lead you to having more experience, thus being a better problem solver. Now, the second habit of highly effective developers is that they leave code better than when they found it. So here's what I mean by this. When I was a new developer and I was just getting started, I didn't really see a point or at least know how to look at a piece of software or code and find ways to improve it. When I'm talking to the senior developers and I'm just looking at the way they think and approach code, they are always looking through the lens of how they can improve what they're looking at. Whether that mean being more effective and making it like a reusable piece of software or simply fixing bugs or, or improving it in some way. And so a goal that I've tried to do and what we should try to do is at least as a community here is always think of ways to improve, whether it be our own code, um, open source code, or someone we're trying to teach. And I think going at it through that lens of like a never ending approach of just trying to improve a code, it's quite impossible to be bad at programming, but also quite impossible to not be amazing at code because you're always improving. And that actually leads us to the third habit of highly effective developers, and it is that they are lifetime students. If you're not learning, you're not growing. And as developers in this weird freaking field that we're in, it's developing all the time. And if we're not learning, we're gonna fall behind. And just looking at people like WebDev Cody, who's made over 900 videos, and Josh Tried Coding, who has over 100,000 subscribers and 222 videos, these guys are extremely, extremely, extremely experienced programmers, like senior developer level programmers. But if you go through their videos, they're always learning something new. Josh is making like an open source project, or he's researching UUIDs and making a video on it. Same thing with WebDev Cody, here he's working on Drizzle. He didn't know Drizzle before. And and just looking at these YouTubers and, and outside of this, like non-YouTubers, they always learn. This could mean learning a new language, learning how to do something better. And I've fallen victim to this where I graduated university and I stopped learning because I didn't see a point in it. But when you see how these people go, at least the, the best of the best, they're always looking for ways to learn and they have to find some sort of humility to do that because it does take some effort to push aside your ego and acknowledge that you don't know something because you want to learn it. And a really cool way that you can actually just be a lifetime student is to find new things to learn. And because you're always learning, again, you cannot lose because you're learning a bunch of things. If I just stuck with HTML and CSS, I would not be a better developer than I am today. But because I've progressed and have been humble enough to go through a bunch of languages that I've tried to learn and sacrifice a lot of time and effort and ego to learn these things, I've grown as a developer. And for the next few years, I hope that I learn more languages. I learn more about data structures and algorithms and be a better developer because I'm open to being a student. And so be a student for the rest of your life. And this is actually quite opposite for the fourth habit of highly effective developers. And it is that they are lifetime teachers. Now you're probably saying like, how could someone be a lifetime teacher and 
a lifetime student. These two can be coinciding with each other because to be a better teacher, you have to learn new things. And to learn new things, you have to be able to teach it to others, right? Like I can't make a video on building a website without knowing how to build a website good. You know, I have to know how to teach it and know how to talk about it while also building the actual thing. And just looking at these developers, like the people on YouTube that we were talking about, but even just in general, senior developers or any sort of, you know, higher level developers, they're always open to teaching others that know less than them, regardless of where they are. And personally, I've learned more and I've grown much more as a developer through teaching and making these videos rather than just doing courses online or even just making projects online because I have to make sure that the video is correct, right? Like you can get away with making a really shitty website, but you can't get away with it when doing it online. You have to do your research. You have to make sure you're doing the right principles. And for the most part, okay, you're going to make mistakes, but by at least having the goal of teaching someone something, you will improve as a developer. And so even if you're not gonna make YouTube videos or TikToks, you don't have to do those things. But what I advise you to do is to teach people that know less. That could mean talking to your parents about programming. That could mean talking to your friends or even just journaling about what you've learned. And personally, this might be my favorite run. It's just, it's amazing. Now, the fifth habit of highly effective programmers is that they focus on output. The most impactful thing to the creative process of whether it be creating an app, making a video, or making a product for your customers is to worry about what other people will think about it or comparing your product to someone else's. Like imagine right now, like I'm making this video and I'm so worried that this video will not get as many views as my competitor or like whatever, another person's videos. That will hinder my ability to make the best video possible because I'm focused on the wrong things. And a great frame of mind is to focus on what you can control, AKA your output. Focus on how much you are coding, what you are making, and how much you are improving. And don't focus on how others are doing and how many like customers like you and, and stuff like that. And at least what I've noticed with people in all aspects of like crafts, like sports, and more importantly, business, is that they focus on their output. They are trying their best to control what they can control and forget about what they cannot control. This is like very stoic. Like if you know anything about the stoics, this is what they do. They tend to focus on what they can control, like their inputs and how much work that they put in. And they forget about what people say about them and what others are doing because they have no control over that. So focus on your output, not what others are doing. Now the sixth habit of highly effective developer is that they love failure. It's very easy and common to think that if you fail at something or you're not able to do something, that that means that it's wrong or bad. You know, maybe you're working on a feature or you're trying to learn a language and you're struggling with it or you're not able to, and you, it's really easy to just beat yourself because of that. But a great developer or person or leader will look at failure through a learning lens. And instead of ridiculing themselves for that failure, they tend to ask themselves, what can I take from this so that this will never happen again? So a great thing to ask yourself is how can I learn from this? And not only will this just help you mentally because you're not so hard on yourself every time something doesn't go your way, but you give yourself the space to actually learn something like programming, which is difficult in the first place. So if you're fucking up or you're not where you wanna be or you're just struggling with things, realize that that is completely normal. The best of the best, they lose, they struggle the same as you, but the only difference between those that actually succeeded and failed is that the succeeded ones kept going and they did not stop as a result of the failure, while the people that failed gave up because they faced a little bit of resistance. And finally, the final habit of a highly effective developer is that they are leaders. You know, there's this weird stereotype about developers is that we're supposed to be these antisocial, awkward types of people. But I think, although that is true, like I'm not the most social person and I'm pretty introverted, a great developer who makes an impact at their company or their own business leads and is a leader even before a programmer. This could also mean they're a great communicator and they've learned the skills to talk about the product, to market the product. And they're also easily able to motivate people. You know, a leader can also motivate people to do more work or have a clear goal in order to get more work done. And imagine what you could do with like five motivated people than just two or three semi-motivated people. And I think a great leader is not only just someone that has the best 
programming skills, but they were able to communicate the goals of the product, not only to the team, but also to the customers. And I think with great communication, there'll come clarity, which leads to a greater product and a better programmer. But yeah, these are the seven habits of highly effective developers. If there's one that I missed or I sort of added, let me know, but I think I got a good amount. If you wanna join the developer Discord group, I will leave that down below. We have over a thousand developers. And also if you wanna see the platform where I have some uh, free courses down there, then I will leave the app down below. Happy coding, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.